Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I would like to do an objective test on the Gaia 3 isolation feat from ISO Acoustics. And so a customer had requested that a pair of speakers that I was building for them have these isolation feet. And so once I received them, I was curious to test out the feet to see if they actually uh, improve the performance or hurt the performance and so not knowing very much about what these feet do I decided that I wanted to look at intermodulation distortion in the upper treble or sorry upper mid-range um, and so to do that what I had done is I mounted these feet to a 12 inch subwoofer and then I placed a high frequency horn on top of the subwoofer and so I fed the subwoofer at 30 hertz test tone at, I think it was 95 dB SPL. And then I fed the horn a 5 kilohertz test tone and looked at the real-time spectrum uh, result of that. And so I compared it with the feet and then without the feet. And so what I was trying to test was whether the vibration from the subwoofer introduced modulation artifacts, sideband artifacts in the five kilohertz region. And so um, the horn that I used was the ES600 by radial with the SB Acoustics 65 CDNT compression driver, which I know to have very low distortion. And so um, each test tone was produced by a different amplifier, different signal generator, and so the, the two tones were completely separate. So any resulting in intermodulation would either be from the microphone or physical movement from the subwoofer below it, below the horn. And so this was allowing me to isolate uh, the all of the variables and just look at the physical vibration introduced by the subwoofer and whether that was affecting the sound quality through the mid-range and treble. And so to compare, I simply placed the subwoofer on three hardwood blocks on my concrete floor in my basement. So the uh, subwoofer was rigidly coupled to the floor and it was not able to move. It was, you know, you try to try to move it around and it simply wasn't budging. And so that's certainly a one approach to uh, mounting your equipment and then I compared it directly with the same test uh, test setup with the Gaia 3 isolation feet on the subwoofer and so when I did when I mounted the feet the subwoofer actually it, it, you could physically move the subwoofer like it was on a very similar to a car's suspension it wasn't just springy it actually had a, a damped effect to it similar to the shock absorbers on your car so um, certainly uh, seemed a bit disconcerting when the subwoofer is able to float around so much and if I was to speculate before doing the test I would have uh, assumed that the movement would actually harm the mid-range and treble quality because the horn uh, is able to move with the subwoofer and so um, now I did the test you can see here this is zoomed in quite closely in the horizontal axis to show the 30 hertz sideband products. So you have my fundamental uh, F2 at five kilohertz, and then you can see to the left and to the right of that test tone, you can see this 30 hertz modulation artifact coming in from the physical movement of the uh, subwoofer and horn sitting on top. So um, certainly an interesting result. And then not only do you see IMD, one, you also see IMD2, uh, and then further out you see some some products that are further out. Now, I'm not sure what these are. Um, if you know what these are mathematically, uh, where these are coming from, then please uh, leave a comment. <clears throat> so my test SPL was at 95 dB, uh, A, A weighted, um, at one meter, and so you can see that the modulation was 47 dB down, which is actually quite uh, surprising. Um, that 47 dB is a poor result, and that's quite high distortion. And it and the test tone signal of 30 hertz was at the same output level as the 5 kilohertz test tone. I could have likely have gotten even worse performance if I had made the 30 hertz test tone even louder. And so looking at 
switching out to the Gaia 3 test feet, you can see the result. The distortion is another uh, 17 dB down. So we've improved the distortion by 17 dB by adding the Gaia 3 isolation feet. So this was a shock to me. Um, and so when I ran the 30 hertz test tone, the um, subwoofer wasn't vibrating as bad physically vibrating as bad as the rigidly coupled solution and so it seems very counterintuitive that you would think that if the subwoofer cabinet is rigidly coupled to the floor that it wouldn't move well it certainly was moving um, even uh, despite my best efforts to to couple it to the floor with the hard hardwood uh, blocks so um, I guess this is a pretty good advertisement for ISO acoustics. I uh, customer simply gave them to me. I don't have any uh, commercial interests in this. Um, now I was curious to understand this more. Uh, so I went to the ISO acoustics website and what they're claiming is that the damp the damping effect of the feet are it, it's basically absorbing energy where with a, a solution that's rigidly coupled to the floor you're getting amplified reflections back through and so this is uh, you're showing here when the sound wave hits your floor it reflects back at an even greater ampli amplitude and that certainly correlates with what I uh, observed empirically the test cabinet was vibrating more when it was rigidly coupled to the floor and so by adding the, I, the ISO feet, you're uh, reducing that reflected energy by absorbing that energy and turning it into heat. So uh, they do offer great uh, explanations on their website. Um, so my conclusion on this, highly recommended. Um, I was uh, took these feet and I put them underneath the Sabrin speaker system 1309 and I immediately noticed an improvement in the bass and so it wasn't it wasn't a small improvement either so um, certainly uh, highly recommend the uh, Gaia 3 or 2 Gaia 2 or the Gaia 1 uh, isolation feet depending on your loudspeaker's physical weight so there you have it interesting test and it's something that uh, another rabbit hole that i think i'll continue to investigate and to uh, try to understand this better take care and have a great day